Hello, welcome to another episode of the Creepy Fox Scary Stories Podcast, the show in the series where we go ahead and relive and retell the scary experiences that were shared by subscribers just like yourself. Today's episode will be a little bit different. Since I didn't get any new stories sent to me this week, I wanted to go ahead and give you all a remaster and a collection of some of the creepy bar stories we featured throughout the last couple of years. You know, I figured this was a great way for people who are just looking for bar stories. That way you're not trying to track them down throughout my uploads. Do make sure that if you want to send in a story to get featured on another video, you send it in using the email that appears on all my videos, tcfnarrations at gmail.com. Anyway, let's get started, shall we? 2019 was a pretty rough year for me. My girlfriend of five years had left me for another man, and I had gotten let go from my job due to some budget cuts. I'll admit, it was tough, and if it wasn't for my loving family being there for me through it all, I don't know where I'd be right now. Sorry, I don't mean to be a downer here. I just want to explain the reasoning on why I went on a little vacation. My oldest cousin, who we will call Mariah, lives in Denver, Colorado, and after she found out about my trouble, she had told me to come out to visit her for a couple of weeks, so that I can try and get away from always being locked up in my room. So one early morning from my home in San Diego, California, I board an American Airlines flight, and a couple of hours later, I arrived to my cousin Mariah's house to start my vacation away from home. Those next days were spent hanging out and playing video games, watching movies, walking Mariah's Siberian Husky Hunter, and finally being able to let out a few laughs. I can't tell you how genuinely satisfying laughing felt. It's like someone hit the empty trash bin on my sorry behind, and life was starting anew. After a week, I felt so much better, and I felt very confident I could return to look for work once I was home. But that was the least of my troubles. I still had another week here to enjoy and spend time with my cousin. Now, so far I've highlighted all the fun and innocent stuff. And while I can totally go into more of what I did, I don't think that's what you're all here for. You're like me. You enjoy yourself a good scare. And let me just say, this was a scare like none other. It was a couple of nights before I would be heading back home and Mariah finally took me to this bar slash restaurant she had been mentioning the entire time I was visiting. It was jam-packed with patrons that evening, and we actually had to get put on a waiting list for around 30 minutes just to get a seat. I almost told her we should have just gone somewhere else, but alas, the 30 minutes come and go. Finally at the bar, we both ordered our favorite drinks, a couple of mango carts, alongside a large basket of cheesy nachos with extra jalapenos that we shared. Fast forward about 15 minutes of talking, watching the game on the large flat screen TV, and having a great time, we noticed a man in his early 40s take a seat next to Mariah. Nothing really seemed off about him as I remember him ordering some Jack Daniels with a Coca-Cola and a hamburger with french fries before he started conversing with one of the bartenders. Maybe another 10 minutes go by and I'm getting a strong urge to go and pee. Turns out Mariah was feeling the same way, but we didn't want to lose our spots. So Mariah goes to the restroom first, and once she returns, I go and do the same. This is when our night was about to take a turn, for the worst. When I'm returning back to Mariah, I had noticed the man sitting next to us was talking to her. I thought to myself, huh, that's cool, I guess. Mariah has always been the talkative type, must be commenting on the game. As I got closer, I start to realize this guy is drunk. I ended up hearing him say that he liked to take Mariah back to his place, to which Mariah just jokingly laughs it off. This must have caused a switch to flip in this man's head, because all of a sudden he gets up and proceeds to yell at Mariah. I'm serious, don't you dare laugh at me and make me a fool. Bear in mind there's loud music playing over the speakers so unless you were looking in the general direction of this man or you were very close by, you would have not been able to tell he was yelling. Anyway, this is when I got involved, being the overprotective family member I am, and I told the man to relax and let it go. He tells me to get lost. Well, he said something else but I'd rather not repeat it here. 
before proceeding to tell me he would kill me if I got in his way. I can't tell you how hard I had to try and compose myself as I was trying to be the better man by telling him just to drop it, but he doesn't seem to understand. While he continues to yell at Mariah and I, and patrons are just staring at us as if they were watching a movie or Jerry Springer or something, the guy grabs one of his forks from the counter. He then charges at me with said fork as I'm standing there frozen in what seems like slow motion. I don't really know how to best describe it. If anyone else has been in a situation where someone is trying to attack you, maybe you might understand. Well, he does manage to cut me a bit on my arm. Nothing too serious. But in the process, I proceeded to hit him with a Roman Reigns-like Superman punch that hits him straight on in the temple. The dude drops instantly, and it's only now that people are finally coming to help out. One of the security guards who was outside the bar comes to check up on us. Meanwhile, the cops were called. The man regained his composure a short time later, and once the police got there, he got handcuffed. He got put in the back seat of a police cruiser, not without a struggle that saw the guy get tasered. I was treated for my small wound, and after what felt like forever, we finally ended up going back to Mariah's place, but not without me getting barely any sleep. I was just so full of adrenaline and still shaken up by the incident I'd just gone through. It's not every day you go to a bar and you have some drunk guy attack you with a fork. It's scary really, but I'm just glad nothing else happened to either Mariah or anyone else at the bar. For the rest of the vacation, what was left of it, went by fairly uneventfully, and I returned back home in one piece. As an update, I landed a job working for a family friend's business, and I'm still there today, enjoying my life and employment. I've since met a wonderful new girlfriend who I love very much, and who also loves listening to the videos on your Creepy Fox channel. We're both huge fans, and we wish you nothing but the best, as well as a continued speedy recovery from your total knee replacement surgery. I'm sure I can speak for most people, working in the restaurant business comes with its ups and downs. On one side of the coin, it's a job. Add on top tips from generous patrons and you might walk away with quite a bit of money after your shift. But then you've got those certain customers. The ones where it seems no matter how much you do for them, they can seem to appreciate you. I take you back with me to a time when I used to work for a Buffalo Wild Wings as a bartender. I am male, by the way. Now, when it came to conversations with customers, it was usually just about what they were going to order. Occasionally, you had the chit-chatters who might ask you about your day, but for the most part, you're serving drinks. Well, I remember it was on a Monday because there was football, and our Buffalo Wild Wings had been packed. I was busy serving customers when one in particular called me over with a very angry tone. I've been waiting here for an hour, and not one of you has taken my order. Is that how you treat your customers? Now, even though we were busy, one thing I'm good at is telling a part who has been waiting for too long and who hasn't. This guy hadn't been here for more than five minutes and was really being over dramatic. I tell him I would get his drink right away just to get him off my case. He orders a Dos Equis and then another waitress takes his orders of wings. And that was it. At least for about five minutes. Hey, bartender, get me another drink and make it quick. It's the same man yet again. I tell him to give me a minute and he snaps back at me, pretty much calling me all the names in the book. A couple of other patrons try to get him to settle down, explaining how busy it was, and he seems to chill. Fast forward, I want to say 15 or 20 minutes later, and I'm just returning from a break. Where were you? I've been looking for you all this time. None of your other bartenders or waiters are serving me like the king I am. You should be grateful we essentially pay your bills. The customer is always right. This guy was definitely taking the title of worst customer ever. Oh, and by the way, the customer isn't always right. That's a false statement given by restaurants in order for us to truly value the customer. And don't get me wrong, we do value the customers, but only nice and respectful ones. Anyway, I grab him two Dos Equis so that he would stop complaining and I get back to work. At this point in my story, the man has had four Dos Equis and he's starting to get wasted. I notice he starts an argument with the waitress who brought his food, asking why his wings were cold and how he had been kept waiting for hours. 
Realistically, it was maybe 30 minutes of waiting. I do remember the waitress that served him was fairly new, so she actually started to cry, and I felt really bad for her. This was the point I got involved and took over, even though I should have gotten a manager. What are you going to do about it, tough guy? You can't touch me. Come on, fight me, I dare you. The man is continuously pushing me and trying to get a reaction. How I remember trying so hard to keep my cool. Meanwhile, some other customers are asking him to calm down. Suddenly, he snaps. He grabs one of the Dos Equis bottles he had been drinking and then smashes it against the bar table. Using the pointy end of the bottle, he takes a swing at me. By this point, I'd already had my arms up to cover my face from the blow, but he still manages to cut me up pretty badly, leaving some nasty scars and blood. That was enough for two other patrons to get involved. One of them smacks the bottle out of the man's hand, and the other puts the man into a chokehold. I sort of just stood there in shock, holding my arms up, which were beginning to sting. A bunch of other patrons then come to our rescue, getting a security guard involved in the process. The man is detained and escorted out of the bar, and the police later question and arrest him. When officers asked if I wanted to press charges, I gladly said yes, and he was charged at a later time. As for my arm, it did require some stitches, but I made a full recovery, returning to work not too long after that crazy event. This is the first time I've shared this online with anyone, so please go easy. First, some background context. This is from the late 1990s when I was on a business trip in Mexico. I was working for a clothing company that manufactured wedding dresses. Also, I'm female, and I was roughly 28 years of age. Now, when most people see me, they don't think I speak or understand Spanish. After all, here is this light-skinned, blonde-haired girl, blue eyes, from New York. You'd be surprised, but I actually studied Spanish three years in high school and one year in college. Sure, I had a funny accent, but I understood pretty much any conversation. I truly believe this is what would save me. Anyway, with me on this business trip were two other co-workers of mine, who were going to call Julia and Danny. We each stayed in our own hotel rooms and checked in on a Thursday morning. After a bit of rest, we met up with a couple of the company representatives we were to meet, and we spent the rest of the afternoon talking and demonstrating our clothing line. They really enjoyed our presentation, and as a reward, they invited myself, Julia, and Danny to an all-you-can-eat buffet. We ate like no tomorrow, that by the time we were done, I couldn't move. Luckily, the next day would be a day of rest, so there was no need to worry about being out late. After sitting around the buffet and talking, we went to a bar that was across the street, and we spent about an hour having drinks and listening to music. At one point, I had to use the restroom, so I excused myself. The thing was the restroom was out in the back, which meant I had to exit through the front entrance, walk back into a dark, lonely alleyway, then head into the little stall to take care of my business. I'm sure you can already tell where this is going. As I exit the bar, I accidentally bumped into someone. He was an older man, somewhere in his mid to late 40s. He was average height and built, had a bald head, tattoos on his arms, and a look that said, Watch where you're going, or you're going to get shot. I remember I ended up apologizing in Spanish and I start to walk away, but he instead grabs and pulls me closer. I'll go ahead and write the Spanish parts in English so you can get a better understanding. Plus that way I'm not going back between Spanish and English and vice versa. What's the rush, beautiful? Want to get some drinks with my friends and I? Sorry, I'm already here with someone. I hope you have a good night. I push away from his grasp as he starts to follow me out of the bar. Come on, maybe I came off the wrong way. I'll buy you something. I've never seen too many pretty blondes like you. For the last time, no. Now can you please leave me alone, or I'll get the security guard. I didn't have to because the security guard overhears the conversation and asks the man what was wrong. I couldn't believe what he tells him. He says that I was his wife, and we were just having a little argument. As if. I decided to hold it in and I returned to my friends telling them about the creep I stumbled into. They agreed it was creepy and we decided to leave. 
However, we still had to get to our hotel, which was about a 10 minute walk. How I wish we would have called a taxi, but we decided the streets were busy and lit enough for us to make it there safely. To be honest, we just didn't want to waste money on something so mundane. Anyway, before we knew it, the once lively street with all the restaurants and bars started to grow distant and quiet. We were now about five minutes from the hotel, walking alongside a couple of beach houses. What happened in the next few seconds was a life changer. Just to give you a visual, I was closest to the street, followed by Julia in the middle, and then Daniel. We all of a sudden hear the sound of a car approaching, then what sounds like a door being opened. Before I knew it, I was being pulled into a van. Those moments seemed to go off in slow motion. When I looked to my right, I saw a familiar face. The man from the bar. So, this was his plan. Wait until we were away from any witnesses, and then try to kidnap me. By some miracle, he hadn't gotten a proper grasp of me, which allowed Julia and Daniel to pull me back. I fell on top of them. If anyone watches pro wrestling, you'll get the visual. You know that move where the wrestler jumps off the top rope onto another group of wrestlers that are waiting to catch him, only for all of them to fall over? Yeah, something like that. The last thing I remember was the van speeding away, never to be seen again. I was in shock that it wasn't until we got back to the hotel I had a panic attack and I cried for almost 30 minutes straight. I couldn't believe I was almost abducted, and it's scary to think it can happen at the most random times. I truly believe had my co-workers not been there to pull me back, I most likely would have never seen my family, or my friends, again. That thought still haunts me to this day. By the way, the police were of almost no help, and they never did call us back with any updates. Regardless, we made it back to the US without any further altercations. Hey there everyone, I hope you're enjoying the episode thus far. I just wanted to go ahead and mention that in case you missed the announcement on last week's episode, I'll now be uploading members only scary stories narration videos for all channel members going forward. There's currently three episodes up thus far, which you can check out by visiting my channel today. Of course, you'll still be getting your normal weekly scary stories uploads. This is just simply my way of giving back to all the amazing people who support me with memberships. Anyway, back to the stories. Hey there everyone, I have an experience that I would like to share with you going over the time when I was in Mexico. For some context, I'm male and I was 24 at the time. This was in late October of 2015 and my family and I were staying over at my aunt and uncle's house for a couple of weeks. They live in the city of Colima, which fun fact, the state is also called Colima. So it's Colima, Colima, Mexico when you write the whole thing out. We spent the majority of the two week vacation visiting family and attending parties thrown by friends and relatives. The most memorable celebration had to be my youngest cousin's quinceanera. That was the first time I'd ever attended one. And let me just say the carne asada they served was like none other that I'd ever had. It didn't feel heavy nor greasy, the spices were just right, and the salsa that accompanied it was just splendid. Anyways, this isn't about the party. One evening, my parents had gone with my aunt and uncle and cousin, the one who celebrated her quinceanera, to visit some old relatives. This just left myself and my older cousin Ricardo. For reference, he's 28 years old. The reason we didn't join our family was because we had already made plans to go into town and grab dinner and get some drinks at a local sports bar slash restaurant. At about 8pm we get into my cousin's truck and we drive into the downtown district, which was decorated and lit up with a Dia de los Muertos theme, quite different from what I was used to here in the United States with Halloween. Because the parking lot was jam packed we parked just a 30 second walk from the bar next to a neighborhood and we soon reached the bar where we put our names on a waiting list. I won't bore you with the details or the wait time as we just watched a replay of football on a large screen, but I'm talking about the international version, not the American version. After almost 35 minutes of waiting, we get our names called and we take a seat at a two-person table. Fast forward after the food and drinks, we head to the back of the bar that featured another packed room containing pool tables, bowling and some arcade machines. 
We looked around the crowded room of about 50 patrons and saw one of the pool tables was empty. Ricardo and I decided to play a couple of rounds of billiards considering we were already here and we had nothing else to do. Ricardo started first, hitting the striped ball, leaving me with the solid colors. As we started taking turns and adjusting our angles of hitting, the pool table next to us, which had just been cleared of patrons, was once again occupied by a couple of men. Both of them had arrived with large glasses of beer and began playing and laughing. Unfortunately, it seemed that one little mistake on my end would turn this fun and exciting evening into a complete nightmare. As I adjusted myself to take the finishing shot of the game, my pool stick ended up bumping into something. I took one look at my rear thinking I'm just hitting the accompanying pool table, but I see it had hit one of the men. And worst of all, his drink had spilled over all his clothes. This was going to go down one of two ways. Number one, he would have been like, that's my fault for not paying attention, you're good. And that would have been the civil response. But then of course there's reaction number two, I'm going to kill you. And by kill you, I'm sure you already know what that means. To absolutely no one's surprise, I see this man's face turn completely red. He comes up to me and immediately pushes me, causing me to hit the side of the pool table. You spilled my drink. You gonna pay for that, kid? He says, as a combination of vulgarities and other words I can't repeat here I uttered out of his mouth. Look, man, it was an accident. Do you think I'd really be purposely spilling your drink? That's totally not cool. I get where the man was coming from. I'd hate to have my drink spilled. It happened to me once, but I was very cool about it. After about 10 seconds of awkward staring and us just standing still, the man pushes me again. This time I'm on the verge of wanting to fight back, but this guy was taller than me. For my height, I'm relatively short. I'm 5 foot 11, a scrawny 170 pounds. This guy was, from my best memory, 6 foot 2 or 6 foot 3 about 250 plus pounds. There was no chance I was going to fight him. Well, my cousin, a more intimidating 6 foot 230 pounds of muscle, comes up to the man and tells him to relax and that we will get a bartender to get him another drink. Something we clearly didn't want to do, but we were being the better men. The guy looks at Ricardo and I before walking away with his buddy. Sorry about that, cousin. You good? Sometimes all you need to do is just stand up to these punks. 90% of the time they're just filled with hot air and they won't really do anything. Let it go. I'll take you somewhere else. I agreed and about 10 minutes later we make our way to the front of the restaurant and we let one of the hosts know that there was a guest being violent and rude. We give him details and the host says he saw someone matching the description storming out of the bar with another guest in an apparent fit of rage. Now thinking the danger was finally laid to rest, we begin walking back to the truck, laughing at how silly the entire incident was. Those laughs would be shortly lived, when out from nowhere we hear a bunch of loud footsteps approaching. Hey, the two of you, get back here. I'm not done with you guys. We turn back and we see it's Mr. Spill Drink, except this time he's God of all things, a knife, and so does his buddy. You made a fool of me in that bar, now I'm going to teach you a thing or two about respect. Time went into slow motion as I stood there in fear watching the two in their drunken rage as they began to charge at us like lions. I recall all the sound around me going quiet, being replaced by my heartbeat and heavy breathing. When it seemed I was toast, I recall my cousin yell my name as he grabs my arm and we start to run. My hearing had then returned and I'm now laser focused on the police who had just shown up at the bar. I didn't even have to say a word because the two officers just ran past us and chased the two with the knives. They got them without any further altercation, thank God, and Ricardo and I soon joined the crowd of onlookers as we watched the men get placed in the back of police cars. We got questioned and we gave a statement, but other than the scare and the adrenaline rush, that was pretty much it. It wasn't until a week later, back when I was in the States, that I talked with Ricardo over Xbox Live and he told me how the police got there. Apparently after the spilled drink incident and when the man exited the gaming room, one of the patrons at the bar recalled seeing a man messing with a knife. That's when he called for the police and told them there appeared to be an impaired individual with a blade. It just so happened the officers got there 
just as we got chased and that impaired man was the same man along with his friend. Quite the coincidence for sure, but a coincidence I'm very thankful for. Who knows what might have happened had they not gotten there when we needed help. So anyway, that's my story. A word of advice, if I may. Avoid playing at pool tables when the room it's located in is jam-packed with patrons. The last thing you want happening is some creep coming after you because you spilled their drink. Anyone else big into concerts? Well, I used to be in the 2000s when I was in my early 20s. In fact, I had a streak where me and my friends had to attend some sort of show at least once or twice a month. Normally, they were small acts and local talent, but it was my way of showing my support for my love of music. This occurred when one of the bars in my downtown district was having an 80s rock and roll music festival. It was neat, because that bar not only acted as a gathering spot for people to get drinks and eat, but it had its own little venue that can fit up to 300 people. My friend Alexis and I arrived extra early and we were able to secure spots in the mosh pit so to speak, if you really wanted to call it that since again, this venue is pretty small. After about 25 minutes I started to get overheated from the lack of ventilation and all the people, so I told Alexis I was going to step out for a bit to get some fresh air and maybe even get some water. I also tell her I'll call her once the show is over so we can meet up. It took me a solid minute just to be able to squeeze my way out to one of the side exits, but what a sense of relief I felt when I was in the lobby of the bar. One of the bartenders noticed my distress and offered me water, so I sat down and drank at least two large cups before I could finally feel my energy coming back to me. By this point, the bar portion of the venue was jam-packed with people and it's pretty hard to make my way just to the restroom which I needed to go to badly. Here's when things got kinda scary. As soon as I exit the restroom, I had to take a turn to reach the lobby. Unfortunately, there is a wall that hides the view of any upcoming patrons. This meant that in all my excitement, I happened to bump into this huge, tall, intimidating biker dude. He had the typical jacket with spikes on the top and a bunch of patches. Watch where you're going, kid, he angrily says as he pushes me against the wall. The thing is that I took him down with me by mistake. As I was falling, I looked for something to grab onto. I chose to grab onto his arm, which was holding a beer. This guy lost it as his drink spilled not only on the floor, but all over me. He begins to curse loudly, which grabs the attention of some other patrons who tell this man to chill. What he does next, I'll never forget. He reaches into one of his boots and he takes out a knife. I froze as I looked at the stainless steel as it began making its way closer to my face. No kidding, time seemed to have gone into slow motion as I dodged out of the way of his swing. By some sort of miracle, about three security guards happened to see what just happened. Alongside a patron who managed to smack the knife out of his hand, they tackled the man to the floor as if they were football players. Needless to say, Alexis and all the other concert goers had no clue to what was happening on the other side of the wall where I was. That was until someone went into the concert room and had the musicians stop playing. Cops arrived in about 5 minutes and the knife man was placed into handcuffs and taken away. So like I mentioned at the beginning, I used to love going to concerts. But after this happened, it took me almost a full year to once again gain the confidence to go out and to celebrate live music. Being a bartender, you're used to dealing with people all the time. I chose the job because the bar I applied to was well known for pretty chill customers, and considering it's rock and roll themed, it went perfect with my love of music. That and because I always loved going there with my friends. Anyway, I'm still there today, and I enjoy a pretty nice balanced schedule, consisting of Monday to Friday afternoons and evenings. I don't think I need to tell you how bad it was for our industry in 2020, but since that's behind us I'd rather not get into it. This incident in particular just happened fairly recently. Not sure when you're going to include this in a video, but I'm writing this up about a week after it took place. So anyway, it was on a random Wednesday weekday evening, and it's me and one other bartender on a relatively slow shift. I was serving up drinks, and I was having conversations with a couple of regulars that I had befriended over the love of the band All Time Low. The bar was about 25% its capacity, and you could see some customers sitting at tables spread apart in the dining area, 
having fun, sharing laughs, and enjoying delicious food. While I'm enjoying my shift, my coworker Jennifer is having the complete opposite emotion. She was feeling pretty low that evening as her boyfriend of two years had left her for her best friend. Really messed up if you ask me, considering she's become almost like family to me. So you bet I was trying to cheer her up and get her to smile. It worked at some point, but I think it was because she didn't want to make me feel bad. After my friends left, the time is now roughly 11.15pm and we're set to close early at midnight. The bar is slowly approaching emptiness with two guys at the bar having drinks and laughing. At this point in my employment there, I had never seen them before. Now, one thing I couldn't help but notice as I'm looking at my phone was they kept making remarks about Jennifer. Some normal, some not so normal. Remarks that I'd rather not share here since they were pretty gross. Anyway, what really set off Jennifer and I as well was when she tried serving them a drink. And the larger of the two men grabs her arm and tries to pull her close to his face for a kiss. I got so mad as I yelled at the man to let go as Jennifer jumps back in complete shock. The man suddenly stands up in what looks to be a drunken state and tells me what in the world I was going to do about it. Now, again, I've been working as a bartender for quite some time, so I know how to de-escalate situations. I remember telling Jennifer to go get the security at the front as I told the man that behavior was unacceptable, and if he didn't calm down I was going to have to ask him to leave. The creep starts to laugh and then begins name calling me, trying to get me to fight him as his friend starts to cheer him on. Ugh, just relax Steven, I tell myself in my head, saying Ralph, our security guard, would get here and stop these two creeps. Oh, and just a quick mention, our security guard's nickname is Ralph. Yeah, from Wreck-It Ralph, because he loves that movie, plus he's the kindest and sweetest person you'll ever meet. But you don't want to make him mad, as he is very protective of all his workers, just like Ralph is protective of his friends in the movies. For some context on Ralph, he's been a bouncer at multiple clubs for years and he's pretty hefty and fit. 270 pounds and 6 foot 5 of pure muscle man. That's why you don't want to mess with him. At any rate, before Ralph has a chance to get to me, the creep actually starts to vault over the bar counter and once he's over he grabs one of the mug glasses and starts to shout. I begin to back up as he begins throwing the glass mug at me, trying to hit me presumably in the head. A customer who was just coming out of the restroom sees the commotion and runs up to help me, just as Ralph and Jennifer enter the room. After a small exchange and struggle with Ralph being able to easily manhandle the creep, the man ends up collecting his bearings by getting up before running out of the bar with his pal. Those two never did return, and it's safe to say the butt whooping they got from Ralph, as well as the embarrassment, is what made them learn their lesson. So, maybe it's not the scariest story in the world, but try to put yourself in my shoes. Both those guys were about 6 foot 230 to 240 pounds each, and I was relatively short. Thank the lord nothing like that has happened at our bar again, and as for Jennifer, she's doing a lot better now. She found a new boyfriend, and he's super cool. I'm best friends with them, and myself and my girlfriend Amber will actually go on double dates with them when we aren't working. What do a couple of rowdy college students do during spring break? They go out, of course. Why wouldn't we? After all, let's see you spending six out of seven days studying and reading out of textbooks. You're bound to go crazy. Speaking of crazy, this experience involves something quite frightening from my days as a college student. A night that would truly show me, everything and anything can happen. It was around 2005-2006 on St. Patrick's Day. My buddies and I just finished class and we met up so that we could go out drinking and have dinner. We put on our leprechaun outfits with matching green hats and we stopped at a local sushi restaurant. Soon after we hit the road and we head downtown so that we could bar hop. The time was around 10pm and the crowd of college students were just starting to file into the area. We ended up spending the majority of our time at, funny enough, an Irish pub. It was jam-packed with patrons. Old and young, everybody was having a great time drinking, eating, and dancing along to the band that was playing. I still remember making an embarrassment of myself and trying to dance with the dance moves I'd seen in the movies. 
My friends joined me and we had danced for about 30 minutes, frolicking around like the kids we were at heart. Eventually, I decided to take a break and I told my friends I would watch them from a table. I walked on over and I ordered another drink, soon being joined by a man as well as who I assumed with his wife. The man was dressed up in an army uniform. I remember getting excited since my dad had served in the marines and I was and I still am very patriotic. We became fast friends and I started talking about the tours of duty my dad had served in. This must have gone on for at least an hour and by this point my bladder was yelling at me. I had to go. So I tell my new army friend I was going to go use the restroom. I remember him telling me that they were going to head out. He gives me a handshake and then heads to pay for his drinks. This wouldn't be the last time I saw him, however. Wish me luck. I had to wait another 10 minutes as the restrooms were full. I honestly thought I was going to pee my pants right there and then, and I'm so surprised I didn't. Once it was my turn to take a leak, I breathed a sigh of relief, finally being able to relax. Even so, I was starting to get pretty tired. I decided now would be a good time to let my buddies know I'd get a taxi back to the dorms. I exit the restroom and I start dialing for a taxi driver when clumsy me makes one of the scariest mistakes of my life. I ended up bumping into someone. I hadn't just bumped into your average Joe. This dude was humongous and he was really upset. I remember him pushing me back causing me to fall flat on my butt. He then started to cuss me out and said he was going to, what's the nice way of putting this, kick my rear end. Well, okay, he didn't say that, but I'm trying to keep the creepy fox from getting in trouble. Anyway, I apologized and I started to walk away, but this only upset him more. He runs ahead of me and then out from absolutely nowhere, he takes out a switchblade from his jacket. At this point, things were going too far and some of the others who were just standing by started to get involved. The creep waved the blade and told everybody to stand back, saying this was just between the two of us. I was super scared since this dude was massive. I was a scrawny college kid back then, about 5 foot 8, 170 pounds. I want to estimate this man was somewhere around 300 pounds, 6 foot 5. Well, before I got a chance to react, someone comes running out from the crowd and tackles this behemoth of a man. The army guy I was talking to happens to see the commotion and came to my rescue. Army dude literally suplexed the creep into a couple of trash cans, like something you would see out of WWE. This caused the switchblade to go flying, almost connecting with a bystander. I remember everyone cheering like they had just seen a pay-per-view or something, as finally a couple of bouncers come to help. Finally, they manage to kick the biker dude out, and everybody breaks out in a cheer. I thanked my new army friend non-stop and offered to buy him food or another drink. He told me something I still hold very dearly. No worries, man. Just helping out a friend in need. With that, he left, and I returned back to my friends, who had no clue as to the match of a lifetime they had just missed. I caught them up later at our dorm, and they agreed it was one of the coolest slash scariest things they had ever heard of. Now, I know the chances of him hearing this story are pretty low, but to my army friend, if for whatever reason you hear this, and you remember the scrawny kid with glasses from Seamus' pub that evening in the mid-2000s, where you suplexed a dude into some trash cans, then I hope you're doing well, my friend. Hey there, everyone. I hope you enjoyed today's episode of the Creepy Fox Podcast. Make sure that if you're new around here, click that subscribe button and the bell beside it. That way you'll be notified of any and all future narration videos coming here to the Creepy Fox. Make sure to also leave a like and a comment telling me what you all thought. Also, consider picking up some merchandise, which you can find right below the video player. I got designs based off the Creepy Fox, as well as my animated series, Aria of Emerald Hearts. Speaking of below the video, there you'll find my St. Jude's charity, which I'm currently running. I've decided to go ahead and extend it, thanks to suggestions from listeners. The plan is to run up to a thousand, then I'll send it over to St. Jude and starting again from the start. This way, we can try to send them something from all of us, the Creepy Fox, every once in a while and make sure it's more consistent. So yeah, 
let me go ahead and give a shout out to all the amazing channel members who support me. Thank you to Robbie, Bo, Haiti, Spunky the Nutcase, Rice and Beans, Scott, Sean, Corey, Linz, Maribel, and Blaze Goddess. Thank you very much for your continued support. Thank you of course to all the regular viewers who watch and leave likes, comments, and share the channel with their friends and family. Anyway friends, that's going to go ahead and do it for today. I'll catch you all next time. Take care and have yourself an amazing day.